Hey guys and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to have some free skin details for your character in ZBrush so that you don't have to spend a ton of money on websites such as Texture XYZ. So without further ado, let's get started in the tutorial. We're just going to go to 3D Scans website. Once you are in their website, as you can see, we have different tab over here. You're going to want to click here on free. And as you can see, they're offering a free head scan with all different type of maps, OBJs, as well as a Marmoset tool bag scene. So what I want you to do is fill those out, uh, your email address, your name, your last name, and then you can download all of those files. Once you're in ZBrush, you can go ahead and go to your load tool. And basically what you want to do is load the content you just downloaded, so the head. All right, now you can click and drag. And finally click on edit okay now that we loaded the entire head what we want to do is go to its lowest subdivision once you have the head at its lowest subdivision you want to isolate it just to make the navigation easier so as you can see this is the lowest subdivision now what I want to do is extract the displacement map so we're going to go over here and simply click on create displacement map. All right, so we have our displacement map over here. Simply click on it. And what you want to do is, oh, actually, I'm sorry. Just click over here to clone displacement map. You're going to have it here in your alphas and then you're going to want to export it. So put it somewhere on your computer where you're going to be able to easily find it. In my case, it's going to be in my picture file over here. And make sure that when you export your file, it's either at 2K or 4K. I did it in 2K, I could do it again in 4K. Um, but since it's going to take a long time to do it again, I'm going to do it in 2K. But in your case, you might as well do it here on 4K just to have as much resolution as possible for your displacement map. All right, now that you have loaded the face of your project, of your character, what you want to do is bring it to its lowest subdivision, or at least the subdivision you would like to be rendered in real time. So in my case, the second subdivision level is the best one, where I can keep as much of this silhouette as possible and with the lowest amount of polygon possible. And then I'm simply going to export it using the FBX export import right here. I'm going to put it in the same place as where I exported my displacement map. I'm going to call it head low. And there you go, I have it it's ex exported. Make sure that when you export the face though, that you have UVs. This is super important because now we're going directly in Substance Painter. All right, once we're in Substance Painter, simply go to New, select the mesh you'd like to work on. So in our case, we want to select the head we just exported. You can put it to 4K, 2K. In my case, I'm going to work in 2K because it's faster and then click OK. Now, as you can see, we have the face loaded over here. Now, the second step is go into our texture tab over here and we're simply going to drop the displacement map we have exported on here. 
in our texture tab. Now if we go in substance, as you can see we have the file over here. We just want to define it in the texture so it's going to be in the right tab. And you can either select current session, uh, shelf for it to be always on your shelf or on the current project. In my case I'm going to do current project because I don't want it to be always present in my shelf. All right, as you can see, it's over here. Now, this is going to be the long part. <laughs> so what you want to do is basically have an a layer over here and have projection selected. Now, as you can see, we have a blank square. This is going to represent the texture you want to be projected on your mesh. In our case, we want to project the displacement map. So it's not really important in which file you put it. I mean, in base, color, in height, in roughness, metallic, normal, it doesn't matter. All we want to do is have the displacement map correspond to our mesh UV so that when we use it in ZBrush, it will correspond to the face we have over there. It will all make sense when all of this is completed. So just select the displacement map and in my case I'm going to drag in base color. All right now this is the fun part where we want what we want to do is basically paint all of the displacement map all over the head. So you can either do it directly in the 3D viewer or you can do it using the UV viewer. So it all depends. In my case, I like to use both depending on what part of the face I'm doing. So for instance, the nose, I find it easier to do it here directly. And now if we paint, as you can see, it appears on our character's face UV. All right, so since all I'm going to be doing right now is paint over the displacement map on my character's UVs, I'm going to speed things up here. And uh, all I'm going to say is make sure that whatever you paint on your character's UVs correspond to whatever part of the face it is. For example, the lips, make sure they are correctly placed onto your character's lips. Make sure the neck flows, uh, the lines of the neck flows correctly. All of those little subtle things, make sure they are placed correctly. If there are wrinkles that you do not want to use on your characters, let's say the, the wrinkles on the forehead, you can always replace them with some part of the top of the head of the displacement map so you don't have extra wrinkles if, let's say, your character is younger. And uh, the ears, I usually don't project them on my character's face since all it's going to be doing is project some holes that I do not want that I already have on my sculpt. So that is about it, about the projection. And there you go. It looks very strange like this, but you'll see <laughs> when we go back to ZBrush when we're going to project it, you'll see what it's going to give. So now that this is over, simply go here to File, Export Textures, and you're going to choose the directory of your file. So in Pictures over here, and now you can choose the file tab. In my case, I like to use PNG. Make sure that whatever output template you choose, it has the base color map, since we've been working on the base color. And once everything is done, you can export this. All right. Okay, now we're back in ZBrush. What we want to do next is import the displacement map we have exported from Substance Painter. So we can scroll down until we see the displacement map tab, click on the square and click on import. 
Now, this is the height map we have exported from Substance Painter. Simply load it. And then when we click on Displacement On, if it doesn't work, if you click Displacement Not On, simply go in Texture and click New Texture. Okay, so now as you can see, the displacement map is inverted since in ZBrush, uh, the UVs are inverted. So to fix that issue, you can simply go in Photoshop. Click on File, Open. And then simply select the height map. All right, the next step is simply go to edit, transform, and vertical. Then you can re-export it as you would usually. So now when we go back to ZBrush, we can reload the file once again with the correct format. And as you can see, we have our displacement map. Now you might think, okay, well, we have the displacement map, but you know, this is only a texture. If I remove this, it's not actually on the mesh. So to apply it, we're going to play with the intensity. So I think this is like pretty intense. So I can lower it, make it a little bit more intense if I will. This is actually going to be trial and error until you have something you are satisfied with. So I think I love something around 005. And before you apply it, Make sure you go in your layer and create a new layer. Once your layer has been created, you can go back to your displacement map and simply click on apply displacement map. And as you can see, we have scan data on your character's head. And now if you want to, you can fix some of the places you don't like. If the next line is strange, you can simply smooth it out and redo it. Um, or you can do it more cleanly directly in Substance Painter. It's all up to you, but it's a very quick way to have a good result on your character's head. And so now whenever you're sculpting, you can remove the layer and work without seeing the details. And whenever you want to see if your character looks realistic, just put it back on. And it's a really good way to sculpt and see details. One thing you're gonna want to verify before you go any further with details is to check how the displacement map is modifying your geometry. So as you can see over here on my head, it's inflating the ears, which uh, makes them look as if they had a butt bite. There's noise over the eyes, the nostrils, possibly the mouth. So to avoid this kind of um, distortion of the head, we're simply going to isolate um, every part of the head that I don't want any of the displacements map. So I'm going to begin by isolating the head. Um, so I did a polygroup for the head. So when I click with Control shift on it, I can easily isolate it. Then with the lasso tool, I can isolate the other parts that I don't want. Now, obviously, as you can see, there are, all ho there are holes that I did not want, but that's all right, because I can always put those parts back on my character selection. So now I'm doing the nostrils. then the mouth and uh, finally I'm going to do the eyes
All right. Now it looks kind of scary. We're just going to invert the selection now. All right, so once again, I'm going to speed things up here since all I'm doing is revert all of the selections that were accidentally isolated. So I'm going to revert those selection back to have as much skin possible available for the skin projections. All right. I'm pretty much satisfied with what I have. I'm just going to go back with the other side of my selection. Uh, here where there's the ear, I'm probably going to isolate those just for it to be as clean as possible. And I'm finally ready for the projection. Going back in my displacement map, I'm clicking on apply. And as you can see, if we put back everything to normal. Uh, the ears are not inflated. There is no nose uh, where the eyes are, as well as where the nose or the mouth. The pus, it, it's possible you're gonna have uh, some lines. So it's possible uh, some lines will appear once you all of your mesh reappears on the viewport. So to fix that issue, all you're gonna have to do is take your smooth brush and basically go to a lower subdivision level, like uh, for instance, number five, uh, where the geometry is not uh, too much and you can use a smooth brush to smooth the edges. And so basically here, I'm going to speed things up one last time, just because that's all I'm going to be doing. Uh, so I'm going from subdivision number five to then six, because whenever, whatever you do on subdivision number five might not affect completely the highest subdivision level. And so when you're done, uh, you're basically done with the projection of your skin details on your character in ZBrush. All right, guys, so that is it on how to get some free skin details for your character in ZBrush. I hope you liked it. If you did, don't forget to drop a like on this video. I will do some more tutorials, so don't forget to leave some comments telling me what you would like me to do some tutorials about. Uh, or if you have any feedback on this one, how I can make them better, uh, maybe more interesting. Uh, so yeah, don't forget to leave a comment, subscribe for more, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye, guys.